All right, thank you for that fascinating report, Hannah. Good luck with that convo. So, uh, Miss T.T. Lati, why don't you tell us about the about other animals other than the one that Hannah covered? You know, just the Grand Canyon. There's so many endangered animals because, I mean, it's a great place for them to live and that's why we need to protect it because there's so many, there's, there's so much biodiversity, there's so many animals in there and that's why we really need to protect it because, I mean, if these animals go down, the biodiversity just goes way down to see these animals. So, I mean, I saw animals that I've never heard about or seen about, not seen about, just seen. <laughs> Fascinating documentary of Hannah. Anyway, let's talk more about the plants. Are you right. familiar with any of the others? Plants. I am not good with plants. I mean, I know they're there, but once again, I don't know their names. Please, Kevin, help me out. All right. Well, one of the one of my favorite plants in there is the is the Tucson flame flower. The Tucson flame flower. Yes. This this mm. thing this plant is really hard to find because its growth pattern is very inconspicuous and it grows in random areas. This random. Is this plant is known for its bright colors. That's what the natives called them because they have bright red on them, and they saw it. It, it looked a lot like a flame, and they realized, oh no, it's not. So they thought some evil came from that. I mean, I mean, really, if you saw a plant that looked like a like that looked like a devil, wouldn't you run or something? Well, that's the Tuscan flame flower. It it's really prone to being able to sustain drought. Like it can go a long time. It's evolved to a form where it can go a long time without water because it's a, it, well, it's the Grand Canyon. There's not a whole lot of water that goes on down there. The, ne the next one is the exotic tamarisk. Are you familiar? Well, I, well, there, no, don't, it's okay, it's okay. Well, these forms are really, it's okay. I just know, know any of these names, please. I go to the Grand Canyon. I look, I went to the gift shop, all right, and I just, I don't even know. I mean, I consider myself a Grand Canyon girl. Like, I consider myself part, I mean, I consider myself, you know, in with the sink of the Grand Canyon, but I mean, all of this is going, I mean, like, I don't know these names, Kevin. I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> how about we take a commercial break? Afterwards, we'll have more information with plants recreational activities of the future plans of the Grand Canyon. We'll see you after these commercials. Okay. Never approach the wild animals. All pets and beasts must be leashed. Don't feed the wild animals either. All vehicles, all vehicles must pay a $25 fee. There's also a $12 entrance fee for pedestrians and bicyclists. Camping is allowed for up to 14 days with a permit, and the permit almost takes five months sometimes to get. The costs vary due to location. Camping below the rim requires a backcountry permit, which is equally difficult to acquire. Hello and welcome back to News at 7. I'm here I hope you enjoyed those commercials. I am back here now with Miss T.T. Lati. Are you feeling better now? No, Kevin, I really am. I mean, we sat down, we talked about the problem, now we're back on the show, here for you. I'm gonna finish this before I gotta go catch a flight back. So I'm, I'm really here, I'm, I'm sorry. You know, just being emotional about my, my feelings, it's just hard sometimes, but I'm here. I think they know Miss T.T. Lati. I know, it's just so much work, but I'm here for you. We're going to do this. So, All what right. are we talking about? The exotic tamarisk. Now, this plant is really hard to find because it grows so high in the cliffs, over 2,000 meters high, and it's really easy, and it's really used to ha not being able to get as much water as it possibly could. Now, this exotic tamarisk, it reproduces by 
letting its seeds fly out into the wind and flying all over the canyon. Now, they won't die if they land in a place that's not very high up. Rather, they won't live as long. Maybe not long enough to reproduce. Right. Now, there's a... So you, is it endangered? It's not endangered, not it's endangered. just exotic. Exotic. So... Rare. Yes. And another another plant I'd like to talk about is the maidenhair fern. Are you from... Oh. Well, this <laughs> fern... Yes, well, this fern is found mostly on the riverbanks. It's one of the more common ferns found in the canyon. It's not endangered or anything. It's just a kind of a, it's kind of a cool fern to look at. It grows 18 to 24 inches, but its growth pattern isn't completely stable. Like, for, for each plant, it kind of differs. It could grow 18 inches or up to 24 inches. It, it, it really varies. All right. I understand. Yeah, and the final one is Indian rice grass. Indian oh, rice grass. Yes. Well, this type of grass is, it's more the common grass that you oh. find that, you find that gr cattle graze on. It's, cattle? Yeah, you ever see the cattle in the distance, like, eating on the oh, hill? Oh, yeah. That's mostly what they eat in the, around these parts, but in a, other areas, like in the Midwest, it could change. But for here, they choose this because it's very, it has a very wide range of tolerance, like a cockroach. Wide range of tolerance, that's great. And it grows, like... 3,000 to 10,000 meter feet high. It's not that hard to reach to, so if you're a shepherd winding in and out of the canyon and you see rice grass, or you see any grass, it's most likely going to be rice grass, because right. that's more of the common thing cool. found. All right. All right, that covers plants. Why don't we move on to recreational activities? Recreational activities. Activities. Or rec recreational areas. Areas? Like that. Okay. Well, I mean, there was the village, like the main area, where you can, like, park your car and, like, stay at the hotels around there, the El Tovar, which I mentioned before. I mean, like, I went there, like, from Williams, like, the tram, the train there, and, like, around there, there is, um, gift shop, you know, I, and the, the, a bookstore, actually, I read a, a book this thick about deaths. Deaths? By what? By the Grand Canyon. By the Grand Canyon. Intense stuff. And... So I mean, there's also, I mean, there's like some rest stops around, like, I'm just resting, and there's like restrooms and rest stops, like, around the trail, like, a few of them, and I, I've heard, actually, that there's a library, and a post library, office, really? you know, like, it's a real town, like, it's a real place, like, it's not just a, ooh, imaginary thing, it's really real, I mean, there's also an IMAX theater, like, I'm not sure if it's on the premise, but I think it is. And um, of the Grand Canyon, so if you really am not into that hang gliding thing, but you want to see it, go to that IMAX, you'll feel like you're there. It's 3D. D. Alright, well I think we have a map of the Grand Canyon here with us today. Didn't you oh, say you brought a pamphlet? I brought my pamphlet Why don't you moment. go get that? Yes. Alright, so... Ooh. This is my pamphlet. The Grand Canyon. And this... Why don't you bring that a little closer so our viewers can see Oh, it? yeah. Obviously, there are a few trails. I mean, you can pick these up almost anywhere, but it's fairly clear that there's, a, like, a light trail, this red one right here, yeah. Hermit's Trail. Then there's Village Route, which takes you between the... blue the, one. Yes, the blue one, yeah. which takes you between... The village. The Grand Canyon Village, where there's... It's mostly, like, where the lodges and hotels yeah. are and the, re and the places to sleep. That takes you all the way to the... Um, market Plaza, where there's more of like IMAX stuff. There's yeah. parking. There's trailer park parking. Yeah. And then there's the Canab. There's the Canab Trail Route, which is like more of a hiking kind of thing. Not something you would do with your grandpa, I don't think. Oh, no, sorry. And there's also a watchtower. A watchtower. Which was built in. I'm not sure exactly, but do you have the name? It was a long time ago. Somewhat, since it's made of stones and it's really decrepit now. I mean, yeah, like, the architect really wanted it to, like, fit into the surroundings. Like, I mean, you can't just put a building there, like, with that's not really mixes with the Grand Canyon. You need to have one of stone that really mixes with it and watch from it, and it's beautiful.